I'm Mike Mandel. I'm chief economist at Business Week. I've been there for 20 years, and uh, I write the Economics Unbound blog at Business Week. I, I don't have an independent blog. I am a blogger for Business Week. Um, however, I have no editor, okay, except ex post. Uh, and so really what it is, it's, a, it's another outlet for my work, and I've got I've got the stuff that I write for the magazine, I've got books, I've got speaking, I've got articles that I write for online, and then I've got my blog. I've got video podcasts too. So it's one of the things, it's one of the things that I do, and I found it very useful for trying out ideas uh, and addressing things that I couldn't address in other forms. It is ideas that may be uh, more radical than would appear in a story in the magazine. It may be things that are maybe a little bit deeper. It may be things that are responses to other people have written. It's got a little bit more personal flavor to it. Um, I wrote, uh, the, a recent post that I did was, you know, is Social Security a Ponzi scheme? Okay, got a tremendous response. Um, and I guess I could have done it for the magazine, but I, I, in the blog I had a lot more control of the exact way that I could shape it. And this is a very delicate topic, and so uh, it was it was it was best suited for a blog. For me, I think it's absolutely essential to be blogging. Uh, I'm very comfortable doing it, but it's part of a it's part of a whole. We're in this weird transition period, and it's easy to be depressed about what's going to happen to journalism. I think if we leap ahead two or three years, okay, what you'll see is that the audience has improved, the economy has improved so that the advertisers have come back, that as the audience improves, what happens is, is that a lot of the mainstream media will be able to decide what strategy they want to pull. They'll either go fully online, they'll go partly online, maintain a print stub, or they keep a full-scale print operation. The number, uh, the amount of advertising will shift online, and you'll end up with a, a whole new ecosystem that'll just feel much, much better. Okay, now whether any particular publication makes it over the hurdle, it, you know, it just kind of depends. Depends on financial condition, depends on leverage, depends on all sorts of other factors that may have nothing to do with the type of journalism that they do or their competition. I mean, journalism needs to sort of pair, can, can go to more efficient operations and it will, you know, journal, print journalism, and it will over time as the audiences change. Um, there'll be some conversions, there'll be some don't. I mean, I don't sit around thinking, I don't sit around reading journalism, uh, blogs and sort of thinking, boy, if they only did X. You know, I just, I just don't, okay? Um, nor do I sort of sit around sort of saying, well, I really have to do it the same way that they do it, because I don't. I think that the way this is proceeding, and I don't just mean the conference, but sort of the entire movement, is, is heading in the right direction. And, and I don't really hold a lot with the sort of the pessimism about, about journalism. So I don't, I, don't sit there and, I don't sit there and sort of think, oh, these ugly bloggers. You could argue that one of the nice things at the, this is that there's an amplification effect, okay? So people actually get a chance to sort of listen to each other directly. You know, for example, in listening to each other, Tyler Cowan and I discovered that we actually share a fairly similar view about what's been driving this downturn and where it's going. And I don't think I would have ever gotten it directly from his blog. I think that this last decade has been terrible for innovation, okay? I think it's been absolutely terrible, in it, okay? That we sort of had the internet which came in in sort of 95, 96, and then, and then in some sense, we've had difficulty kind of moving ahead of it. Uh, social media came in, uh, really hasn't, we haven't figured out what it's good for yet. It's good for something, we haven't quite figured out what it's good for. Uh, enormous amounts of money being put into sort of things like biotech and nanotech haven't really gone through. They are innovative energies, our entrepreneurial energies went into things like finance, which really didn't work out the way that we expected. And so I tend to regard the last decade as being a very weak and poor one for both entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial energies and also innovation. I am hoping, I see I agree with the idea that innovation is the way out and, and entrepreneurialism, and I 100% agree with that. Um, and I'm actually feeling quite positive and optimistic going forward. 
I think that you could argue that um, that with resources relatively cheap, it's easy to start companies, it's easy to start businesses in the downturn, and it will keep being relatively easy. So um, I'm hoping that we're going to move away from a finance-driven economy, which we've been for the last 10 years, into, a, uh, into an innovation-driven economy. Capitalism has always had booms and busts. Always had booms and busts. The trick has been to sort of make sure that the busts don't fall through the floor. This one has been too close for comfort. Nobody can deny that, right? And you, know, you still have your fingers crossed that you don't have more bad stuff coming, and it still might be coming. So at that point, what you sort of say is it, it behooves us to sort of put in a little bit of buttressing, put in a little bit of safety nets, put in a little bit of regulation to make sure that it doesn't get so bad again. It's still capitalism, right? It's capitalism with you've turned the, the, not, the dial, the regulation dial a bit this way to lower the chance of another bust this bad, right? And so is this socialism? No. Is it capitalism? Yes. On the medium term, I'm optimistic. Okay, I'm optimistic because I think the U.S. does have an innovative economy. I think there, is, there are things in the pipeline that uh, could be very positive. And the fact is, is that consistently, over and over again, the world has surprised us. And it surprised us on a five to seven year time frame. And there's no reason why that this shouldn't happen again. And it, it, if, it, if it doesn't scare you that the same people that sort of got the downturn wrong are now predicting no recovery, okay, it should. Why should we believe them now? There's no reason. There are periods, I don't know if you've ever been in a car crash, okay? There's a period at the beginning of the car crash where you're just spinning around, right? And, 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 and it's the same thing in these sorts of downturns. You know, in the early stages of them, which sort of lasted less about a year, you're just running as fast as you can to just stay ahead of the news. So in some sense, this has been a sprint for me, and not all that pleasant a one either. Um, I think now, assuming that we're into the stage of a little bit of slowdown, uh, we can take a pause, look what's happened, and start thinking about where we go, where we go next, without hopefully having to wake up every morning and look at the news and see, see which large financial corporation, which small country has failed overnight. I'm hoping that we'll have a little bit of respite and enough time to sort of think about some of the things we're saying rather than just kind of react.